It absolutely doesn't matter if you are new, returning, or never stop playing The Division 2. This video is going to help you get the most out of Season 9. That includes preparing your stash, XP farming, and acquiring all the new gear and exotics quickly, so you can play the new content with the best. Let's go. Hey banditos, it's been confirmed. A whole year of new Division 2 content is locked in. It is not just year 15, uh, it is year 4. Uh, tier 15 is the first drop uh, and there will be more drops and each drop will come with new things, new seasons and new content. We have new seasons, game modes, vendors, advanced leveling systems, gear and more. Some players like to take their time and sip on new content like a fine glass of wine. And I agree that appreciating it as you go is very, very important. I find I get the best experience when I am able to enjoy the content to its fullest as it arrives. And there's nothing more kick-ass than taking down a manhunt target with the latest and the hottest new gear and exotics. And to do that, I need to be efficient with my gameplay and quickly reap in the XP early. If that sounds like you too, then this guide is going to be very helpful. So let's get the easy stuff out of the way first. If you're new to the game and want access to all the new stuff, then your mission is simple. Get to level 40 and make your way back to Washington, D.C. From there, your eye should be on getting your watch to level 1000 so your builds are at their full potential. Since getting there is about efficiently farming XP while enjoying the game to the fullest, most everything on this list will still apply to you. You're most likely going to have to buy the new season pass. If it's not available now, it will be when the new content drops on Thursday, May 12th. The season pass is going to get you access to everything on the bottom row of the rewards track. This includes extra season 9 gear by means of named item and season caches. Otherwise, the additional resource caches coming off this are more valuable than ever, with the expertise system now being available as part of season 9. Once the rewards track is available, all you have to do to get the rewards is play the game. Earning XP helps you level up on the rewards track and the items will drop for you. Most items will drop in your inventory. If your inventory is full, it will drop in the open world. The caches will drop here. If this is full, they will go to your mailbox. In the past, field proficiency caches are disabled while the rewards track is active. This will resume when you get to level 100 on the rewards track. And we're not done. Through the season, we will have global events. And each of these have a mini rewards track too. They also reward red stars, which act as a currency to buy caches from the season vendor. Watch my Twitch stream between May 12th and May 15th and earn free caches. To receive Twitch drops, you need to sign up here first. Then head on over and watch one of my streams while the campaign is active between May 12th and the 15th. First thing is to get organized. You can't efficiently play this game, farm XP, and get the best gear in the game if your inventory and stash is full. So let's start there. Additional characters are now vital. Make as many level 40 characters as you can, no matter what. Realistically, I think you should have at least two characters. We have serious stash issues in this game and there is no end in sight. We we'll always need more storage. Like, we keep adding new items to the game and yeah. we don't remove. I don't know what the solution is. That means inventory and stash space is the most precious resource in the game. Plan between 3 to 5 hours per character to level up from 30 to level 40. Even if your watch isn't super high, your second character will level up each time you do, so you're earning double the resources. The higher your watch, the more resources you will have instantly when your new character gets their watch. Don't forget to connect your stash to each character by talking to Anaya. Have at least two characters leveled up and playable. That means specializations, skill trees, and mod attachments unlocked too. Use the second character when investing in optimizations, crafting, and expertise research. These activities cost a lot of resources but translate across all characters and this saves you from depleting your main character's resources all the way. Use all the other characters purely as mules and resource banks. If your mule is low on resources, delete that character and create another. Move the gear out of that character's inventory before you do that. Organize your stash and mules. For your main character, your most important build for Season 9 is your solo XP slaying build. This is usually the build that helps you clear a lot of open world content quickly. For me, it's my trusty Mantis build. Those headshot kills lead to headshot kill streaks, both which give me extra XP and allow me to run all directives. Save your best XP farm build to the first loadout on your main character. You need your well-rounded team build in your second
second loadout. This is most likely an assault rifle or rifle build. This should be useful for all open world and missions gameplay, including the countdown. In your third loadout, put a Meta Eclipse Vile team build here. This build is vital to helping groups clear content quickly, which helps you harvest more XP per session, even in group. Your second character needs to be able to play solo heroic and group legendary gameplay. You will most likely only be using them once per week. Use this character to complete all the weekly exotic cash projects. Unlock all specialization skill trees for them. Unlock all weapon attachments for them. Make sure they have useful gear mods in inventory even if they're not god ruled. Don't create duplicate builds or any extra builds for this character. Don't allow this character's inventory to exceed 120 to 100 130 items. Share your top builds from your primary character by exporting the loadout into your stash. Reassemble that build on your second character. Then save it as an additional loadout. This way you can simply export and import the build back and forth between your main and second character. Create a third and fourth character as soon as you reasonably can, especially if you have been playing this game for a while. Keep these characters strictly as mules and resource banks. It's really annoying having to switch between characters looking for a piece of gear. This is how I make it easier. My top 10 weapons are split between my main character and the stash. Pieces for current build projects in the works are hosted on my main character and the stash as well. I keep most backpacks and chest pieces on my main character and stash, except for gear set chest pieces and backpacks. Keep all exotics that you're not currently using on your second character. Try to keep your second character under 120 to 130 items in inventory so you can transfer loadouts to them when you need to play with them. If the exotics push the inventory over, don't worry. You're going to be deleting duplicates and using components very soon. Keep all gear sets on your third character. You're most likely not using this character, so it's okay to push them to 150 items. If there is still inventory space, try filling it with named items, starting with weapons. Your fourth character is the melting pot for all other brand sets and unnamed weapons. It's okay to fill them to 150 items. All named gear pieces could go here too. If you're like me, even with four characters, you're likely still having things you must purge to make room for the new gear coming down the pipeline. Deleting great gear is never an easy thing but something's gotta give. Excluding exotics, choose your top three weapons for your least used classes. Choose your top five for your most used classes. Delete the rest. Ideally, your top choices already have the most useful attributes like damage to armor or damage to targets out of cover, so you can get the most miles out of the weapon by having the ability to reroll the talent. Since you're XP farming, the best build to do that is the build that you're efficient with. Using a lot of different builds during this phase will spread out the proficiency earned and take away from the additional benefits the strongest version of your favorite build can bring. Consolidate your shotgun and SMG builds to Hunter's Fury. Delete all other Sokolov and Badger tough pieces. Keep any rare chest and backpack pieces if you must. Anything else is probably not that precious. Next, Consolidate your standard skill damage build pieces to a single skill damage build. Look, just get rid of all the standard pieces. Skill related gear is the easiest to farm because it has a skill tier that you don't have to worry about whether it is max rolled or not. So you're only farming for two secondary attributes. If you haven't used a piece in 60 days and the gear doesn't align with the new stuff coming with season nine, then purge it. A special note for all of you banditos and members of Texas Players Club. There are a lot of game changing hybrids that have opened up your world to taking on the most difficult content like Solo Legendary. These builds are truly special and remain in my inventory, but you do have to narrow in on your faves. I recommend not deleting anything related to Slaughter or Game Over. Let's talk about how to actually farm XP in the Division 2. During your XP farming phase, minimize activity with weapons outside of your top two builds to prevent wasted expertise. Determine your map settings. It's faster to get XP from the open world than missions because you can complete more activities per hour. Heroic gives you the most XP and I prefer it this way, but many also choose to farm XP on challenging because you can complete more activities per hour this way. The XP per activity is less, but you complete more of them. Adding global directives massively increases your XP. My recommendation on whether you do this or not greatly depends on your builds. For many builds, you are better off without directives because you can then complete more activities in your session than if you otherwise had directives. I will be running four directives in the open world for my XP farming. You should choose at least one depending on your build. Probably the most critical part of 
XP farming is your route and activity of choice. Some will only farm resource convoys because you get a lot of XP and it only takes a few minutes to complete it. The downside is you have to fast travel and run around a lot and these can grow into bigger street fights than you anticipated. I try to avoid running around in the open world. This slows me down and I might find myself taking on unwanted fights. So I have a fast travel route that gets me within a block or two of the best control points to farm. I usually start at this safe house and clear sinkhole. I then fast travel to Capitol building and clear the crash site. I then fast travel to the space admin and make a short jog to No Hope Hotel. From there, I fast travel to the castle and cross the street to clear the choke. To expand, I fast travel to Tidal Basin and clear flooded levee. After that, I fast travel to Potomac, clear out the sleeping giant. Finally, I jog over to Overgrove. From there, I reset my control points as I fast travel back to the safe house I started from. With this method, I usually can get through 100 levels of a rewards track in one to three days depending on how long I am playing per session. Remember, during this phase, donate resources to control point captains for extra XP with directives on. Some banditos farm the summit with all directives. This can get you even more XP. I still prefer the open world because there are less tasks, EMPs, waves of drones, and randomized factions. When farming for XP, I prefer to go solo. I go much faster this way. If you do want to run in a group, I recommend 1-3 to three players. The fourth player scaling is much more aggressive and often slows you down. It's vital you now do all the weekly projects for exotic caches. Joining a Discord is one of the best things you can do if you love this game. It allows you to make your gameplay more efficient because you can get ideas or help on your build when you're not even in the game. You can also arrange group play ahead of logging in to make gameplay more efficient. Tux's Discord is full of amazing, positive people, all willing to help you be successful in the game. If you want to group up, join a Tux clan, raid, or just hang out, this is where all of that happens, and you're now officially invited. Resources are going to be more valuable than ever. For the longest time, they haven't really been a thing I had to keep an eye on. Having extra characters helps us out a lot using the watch. But times have changed. You will need a resource route you can do daily in the open world. These are the best places for food and water. Sometimes you need tool components too. There is a tunnel entrance here. It only takes a few minutes and there's a ton of things to grab on the go. There are a lot of resources around Solar Farm too. Now, that should keep you really busy. But my question is, what is that one thing you will be grinding for? This video might change the way you play The Division 2 forever. I recommend you watch it. Notorious. 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 Notorious.